Arabs and nomads was blurring. They lived in tents, they followed the grasses and waters, they had considerable knowledge of agriculture, they owned cattle, horses, camels, sheep and goats. They were proficient with bows and arrows. But they seemed to be both nomadic and agriculturalist at the same time. So I believe that they were able to adapt to different kind of circumstances and that those who found themselves in oases, for example, became farmers. And those who were in upper pastures or in grasslands uh, either maintained uh, a nomadic lifestyle or they became nomads. Up in the high mountains, the nomadic population expanded rapidly and soon reached the Chinese frontier. Trading directly with the Chinese, they fell in love with their superb silks. To this day, dearly prized by the region's nomadic Cossacks. The nomads had extensive trade networks from about 1000 BC, but the trade in silk began around 300 BC and spread right across the steppes to Central Asia, to Persia and to Europe. This was the luxury item they really coveted. If the Chinese refused to supply them, the nomads bargained even harder. Waves of horsemen laying waste to border towns. The Chinese cavalry was not powerful enough to chase them. But they did have superb engineers. The Great Wall of China was linked up in the 3rd century BC from sections that had been built earlier. It was not yet the wall we see today, but it was large enough to impress the nomads. Along the emerging Silk Road, the Chinese erected watchtowers to warn travelers if marauding nomads approached. In time, cities sprang up along the road. But who built them? Victor believes that at least one city, Zhao He, may have originally been founded by the ancestors of the Tocharians, a mysterious people possibly descended from the ancient mummies. In fact, the European-looking bodies recently discovered by Lu live near Zhao He and date to about 300 BC when the town was first settled. Victor's research shows that Tocharians were living here as early as the 3rd century BC. Several hundred years later, when ethnic Chinese first arrived, most of the inhabitants were still Tocharian. Who were these enigmatic people? If Victor can corroborate his hunch that they descended from the ancient mummy people, a startling conclusion would be inescapable. This region on the very doorstep of ancient China was continuously populated by people of European origin from as early as 1800 BC through the boom days of the Silk Road. The team requests permission to visit a remote site never before filmed by foreigners. There they may be able to glimpse the real faces of the Tocharians. This temple complex, carved out of sandstone cliffs, is riddled with caves where Buddhist monks made their homes. Wow, how nice. It's very small. It's the 7th century. Seventh century. Uh -huh. The walls of the caves are like mirrors, indelibly reflecting the different peoples who pass through the temple. Could they provide clues to the appearance of the Tocharians? Yeah, it's the fleshy face, right? And look up there. You see somebody in a coffin. Uh-huh. You can see the musculature coming And it looks to me like they've, they've got, they're lowering the coffin into the burial. See the mm. ropes around it, the green ropes, and they're putting it down into the burial. Yeah. The clothes they were wearing are the clothes of the local people here in Kucha at the time. 
and it's similar to the Iranian clothes of that period. Oh, look, you look up there. See the, the guy with the horse Jemma. and the pointed hats? There's sure. three of them on that sure. horse. Uh -huh. There's three Saka there with the pointed hats. Three Saka nomads. Many of the faces on the walls have Indian characteristics and caste marks. Others are plainly Europeans, painted in the style of classical Greece and Rome. There are also mounted warriors wearing trousers and boots, their bow cases slung over their saddles. I would also like to point out the recurved bow on this individual kneeling up here. I think that's fascinating. We see a hunting scene of a man with a recurved bow shooting. In the gloomy recesses of one of the caves, the scholars find a crucial clue to the identity of the Tocharians. Not a painting, but script. Amazingly, the Tocharian tongue is more closely related to the languages of Western Europe, with their Indo-European origin, than to those of Asia. I think this is saying Suvarna, Suvarna Pushpa, which mean, would mean uh, gold flower. The name of the king. More than likely, the speakers of this western tongue were of western provenance themselves. The puzzle is coming together. Tartan textiles. European faces shared ritual practices, and now a close affiliation with European languages. They belong to a people related to those who lived in Eastern Europe in a region around the Urals and the Black Sea. Most of their common ancestors migrated west. The mummy people went east through the Russian steppes to the Takla Makan. But how long did they survive here? Were the Tocharians, in fact, their descendants? There's no way to be sure without seeing an authentic likeness of the Tocharians. The guide knows an isolated cave with portraits of the individuals who sponsored the cave building. It's a dangerous climb, more than 100 feet above the valley floor. Up the, up the ladders and across that ledge. Well worth it. Now you've seen the. Oh, well, I would say so. There's some pretty impressive features in this cave. In this vaulted ceiling above us, we have a lot of Buddhas with kneeling figures beside them, and the kneeling figures look like they're Tocharians. So, he's a local person, a Tocharian. Uh, but wearing elements of costume. In a small passage at the back of the cave, Victor hits pay dirt. We see the red beard and uh, red hair parted in the middle. It's a distinctive style of the Tocharians. He's wearing a coat with wide lapels on both sides and it folded over. It's a shame that these figures have all been defaced by people of other faiths at some time in the past. But it's uh, still, it's very easy to see what they looked like and we can tell who they were. The Tocharian figures are strikingly similar to the mummies that lived in these parts a thousand years earlier. Victor's quest has come full circle. Uh, the wide lapel folded back. 
He's got the red beard, uh, red hair parted in the middle. This done.